I want to go over some customer service templates. Now I have a lot more, but I kind of just want to get you started with a starter list. I'll actually try to uh, paste these kind of templates in and I use these all in my own dropshipping business on Amazon. So you can too. Now each is for a specific situation, but it can help to have things like this because realistically what you'll start to notice is you get a variation of similar questions, usually about 10, sometimes maybe a little bit more than that, but usually about like five to 10 questions or issues that pop up. And so you want to have not just like a, a robotic templated response. That's not what I'm suggesting. But what I am suggesting is you want to have kind of like a, a system of, you know, how you usually go about handling that. And a way that you can kind of develop that system is to have at least a template that you can then mold to that situation. Not only does it help save you time, but it also helps save you kind of, um, the headache and the stress because when I used to not have this, like people would suggest this to me before and I would be like, well, that's stupid. Like I don't really need to do that. I can just type it in just as fast as I could copy and pasting it. Right. And that's somewhat true, although it's not true, but it is somewhat true. But what you don't calculate there is the added stress of every single time you get an issue on your hands, every single time you get a message, every single time you get an unhappy customer, you then have to solve that problem. And it's an emotional taxation on you, right? It's a headache that you need to then deal with rather than if you, it's a very different kind of approach mentally. If you have a template that you're just like, oh, this problem, you identify what the problem is and you're like, this is how I solve it. I have the answer. And then you come, you grab this and then you mold it to that specific situation. And it's really, it, it'll really help you emotionally deal with these things so that you're not scared every single time you get a message. I used to be terrified. Like, oh my God, I got a, I got an Amazon message. Like there's a pissed off customer. What if it's an A to Z claim, right? And if you have ways to kind of deal with these things, you'll never run into those issues and it'll help you do it. It'll help you save a lot of time, but it'll help you deal with it emotionally uh, and less headaches uh, a little bit better, if that makes any sense, okay? So I'm gonna start you off with like a, a specific list here just to kind of give you ideas of how you can handle specific situations and mold kind of your own customer service templates. But I'd also recommend that if you start to see an issue come up frequently in your business, A, solve it, figure out like the root cause of it, and I'll tie it back into a little lesson here in a second. But B, come up with a specific customer service template yourself so that you can then go ahead and save yourself time and solve it for all future endeavors, right? Now, the thing I wanted to say is like, if you start to see an issue in your business that happens over and over and over again, that's the same issue. It's the analogy that I've always heard. It's like, um, you know, the, the it's the type of person that goes into like the, um, what's the, the analogy, like the warehouse, right? And there's dust on the floor. And every single day they to start the day, they sweep up the dust. But the smart person goes into the warehouse and figures out and identifies the source of the dust so they no longer have to sweep the dust out every single day before they start their, their work, right? And so it's the same kind of overall template and metaphor here figure out the root cause of the problem and identify the root cause of the problem so that you can solve it at the root cause. Maybe it's a specific listing. Maybe it's a specific product. Maybe it's a specific supplier. Maybe it's a specific state, right? Like there's a number of different things that could happen, but you'll I'll be, able, be able to identify that to your specific situation. But the key here is identify the root cause of the problem if you see it happening a lot and then come up with a templated response to deal with it, okay? So we've already covered these right here in a previous lecture, but I'll just reread them again. Somehow this got delivered to the wrong address. I'm currently on the phone with FedEx slash UPS. Obviously fix whichever one it is. If you use an OAG tracking number, this is obviously for a fake OAG tracking number. So if you, for example, have an item that's out of stock on your supplier's website and you want to mark that ship because you don't want to cancel the order because you don't want that to go against your cancellation metrics, then what you can do is you can mark the order shipped with a fake OAG tracking number, put it in your spreadsheet, turn it blue so you know it's fake and you didn't actually ship that. And then when the customer messages you and like, hey, this was marked delivered, I never got it, I've been home all day or something like that, you'll start to see that happen a lot. Well, then what you want to do is you want to refund them and respond with this template right here. You know, hey, I'm on the phone with FedEx. You know, I'm trying to figure out what's going on. They, they marked it delivered to the wrong address, but I've gone ahead and I've issued you a full refund on your, on your order. Literally attach the screenshot of the refund of their order and say sorry for the inconvenience, okay? Now, if they push back a little bit more, you can say something along the lines of, you know, all they'll tell me, and we've already went over this one, so I won't really touch on it too much, is like, all they're going to tell me is that it's, you know, lost in transit, they're giving me a shipping credit, they've been losing a lot of my packages lately, I'm guessing they're, you know, something along those lines, and then sorry for the inconvenience, but you've issued them a full refund, okay? And those are templated responses that I use all 
all the time when I fake ship things and rarely do I have an issue or pushback from the customer after, you know, further after I give these. Okay. So I'm able to mark things fake shipped and then it doesn't really ding my metrics. I don't get in trouble for, you know, having an out of stock product on my website or anything like that. For example, like one of the things that I always used to run into this issue with was cat food. One of the, the situ, one of the um, suppliers websites that I shipped cat food had all these orders of cat food. Right. And when I, when I was awake, it was perfect. But when I would go to sleep, I would get like, you know, over the course of the, the product going in and out of stock while I was sleeping for like seven, eight hours, it would go in and out of stock. And then I'd wake up to like 12 orders for this specific cat food and I'd wake up and it would be out of stock. And sometimes it would never come back in stock for a couple of days randomly because, you know, my, my software, my SKU grid is, is changing that for me automatically. And so what I had to do is obviously use this a lot. I had to fake ship those because if I canceled all those, all those orders, even with a lot of, of orders on my account, it would be a big ding on my seller metrics, right? So I canceled some of them. I marked some of them fake shipped and that's a good way that it's a good tool to have in your arsenal. Okay. Now the next one is, um, if somebody asks for a refund, there's two ways to handle that. So you can basically say, Obviously, if the, if the product is, um, you know, dinged or, or, you know, if it's, uh, what's it called? Like if the product's damaged or if you ship them the wrong thing and it's not really worth, you know, them shipping it back and you made a mistake, you can handle that in multiple ways. A, you can either, if it's like, uh, a, a broken item and they have proof of it. Like sometimes I just don't even feel like dealing with the return. So I'll just be like, no need to ship it back. I just issued you a full refund. Hope it helps and enjoy your week slash weekend. You know, obviously fix the week slash weekend, you know, whichever one it is. Often, sometimes with these, like I've noticed, like you make a happy customer, everyone's so worried about like getting scammed on the specific sale, but like you're going to make a lot more just keeping your account health overall. It doesn't matter the platform, obviously, specifically here, here we're talking about Amazon, keep the customer happy, survive the order and move on and sell more, right? Live to sell more. Don't worry about the specific, uh, specific order, right? So you might lose. There's been times I've lost 20 bucks, which is no big deal on an order, just refunding. There's been times I've lost 50. There's been times I've lost, I think like a hundred or two, but it usually, if it gets up to there, then I'll, I'll either prepay for them to ship the item back. Um, or like we've covered in, in other, uh, situations about refunds and how to deal with them. What you can do is you can obviously either prepay or, or authorize Amazon to give them a prepaid label, or you can have them ship it back on their own if they just had like a change of heart. Okay. So if you don't want to deal with a refund, you could say something like that. If you do want them to ship it back, but you don't want to pay for the return shipping, you can say one of these two things. Sure. You can return the item to our return warehouse listed below. When we receive the item, we'll issue you a full refund. Thanks. And then obviously this is going to be like your address or your warehouse or whatever. If you don't have a warehouse, just put this back to your address so that you can then receive the product, inspect the product, issue them a refund on their specific order. And then ship it back to your supplier so you can get a refund, right? That's the way that you want to handle that. Or you can obviously use, you know, if you'd like to return this product, some people are message you like interested in returning a product or like they'll say like, hey, they changed their mind. They'll be like, okay, um, you know, if you'd like to return the product, you can ship it back to our return warehouse listed below. When we receive it, we'll issue a refund. Hope that helps. Same thing there, right? The only key caveat I'd say here is like, if you get somebody that is claiming that the product was damaged or you get somebody claiming that you shipped them the wrong product, you don't necessarily want to do this. You either want to do this and refund them, or you want to um, give them a prepaid return label because it's not, even if they're right, trust me on this one. Okay. Don't let them, don't worry about the nickels and the dimes. You're going to make more keeping your account health uh, healthy overall. But if you get one of those, it's not worth going through the hassle because then they're going to get pissed off that they have to pay to return an item that was wrong. Put yourself in the customer's shoes, right? If you got an item that was not the item that you anticipated ordering, right? Or if you got a broken item and then you had to pay to ship it back to the, to the, the uh, site or to the seller, you'd be pretty pissed off, right? So only use this sparingly when it's like a change of heart and the customer's changing their mind or something along those lines, right? If it's damaged or if it's the wrong product, then either refund them or authorize a prepaid label. You can do that on pirate ship if you want to. That's one that I use and then send them an attached pre-label, uh, prepaid label. That works very, very well. Um, you already have their return, their address as well. And then you want to put your return address as like the two on the label. It's very easy to do. Now, this is another one right here when you get somebody claiming like it wasn't delivered or they can't locate it, but it's saying delivered. Obviously, if that happens, you want to check your spreadsheet to see if you've marked it fake shipped because that will 
that will answer your question. If it's blue and you marked a fake ship, then you know that you never delivered it to them. And in that aspect, you want to give them one of these, right? But if you check your spreadsheet and it's a legitimate tracking number and it says delivered, well, then you want them to do a little bit of more research, right? Because it could be a lot of times, like you'd be surprised, like sometimes there'd be a package in someone's mailbox and they didn't even know it. Sometimes there'd be a package on like the side of someone's porch and they didn't even know it. Sometimes there'd be a package up against someone's garage and they didn't know it. And sometimes randomly it would be at a neighbor's house and they didn't even know it. Now, every once in a while, you will have the lost package. And again, if they continue to claim that it wasn't delivered, just refund them. Trust me, because if they, and I've dealt with two A to Z claims recently with this and, you know, probably about a dozen or so over the past year or two. And every single time, not even like, not even a little bit of the time, every single time Amazon sides with the customer, unless you have signed, uh, you, you, you have signature confirmation, right? Because you're not doing signature confirmation, because we're drop shipping, just refund them, okay? Because it's not worth the A to Z claim on your account, okay? So if they do this, or if they say it's not delivered, you want to respond with something like this, okay? And if they continue to push that it hasn't been delivered, don't worry if they're scamming you. Don't worry about if they're a shitty buyer. Assume the best, assume that it really wasn't delivered or it was misplaced, and just refund them, okay? It's not worth the health of your seller account. But assuming that this is the first time and they're claiming that it wasn't delivered, you want to say something like this, like, hey, and then obviously input their name there. You can get their name from the order um, or the message. Your X, whatever it was, was delivered on and then input the date that from the delivery, right? You can see that on the tracking number to the whatever. Usually it's like it'll tell you like deliver to the front door, or deliver to the mailbox or driver release or something like that, right? So you would say like this was delivered to the address on the order, you know, to the front door, to the mailbox. We've also listed that address below. So list their address so that they can literally see that that's where it was delivered from. List the shipping carrier and the tracking number for them and then say, hope that helps, right? And oftentimes something like this will will kind of, you know, it'll reiterate to them that like, okay, you're not just like, you're, you're not un an unaware seller. You know that it was delivered. You can see that it was delivered. You have the tracking number because most people won't push an A to Z claim, obviously, if they got the item or they'll do a little bit more research. So that's kind of how you want to handle that. Um, or you could do this right here. Um, where is it? Uh, if, if right here. So if it's like an apartment building or something like that, or if it's even if it's like a normal house, you can say the same thing like, hey, and then the person's name, this shows that it was delivered on and then put the delivery date that, you know, from the, from the tracking number that you can get. Same thing, input the carrier, input the tracking number there. And then since it's a, this was appeared uh, delivered to an apartment complex, or if it's a, a neighborhood or something like that, since this was appeared delivered to the neighborhood, if you haven't received it yet, I'd suggest, I'd kindly suggest trying, let's put kindly in there. I'd kindly suggest trying to check with neighbors if it's an if it's a neighborhood, right? Um, if it's an apartment complex, I'd kindly suggest checking with neighbors or your building manager to see if anyone else has received the package. Hope that helps. This one works very, very well for apartment buildings and, and people that live in townhouses. I know specifically, like I live in an apartment building and our apartment complex has like, I don't even know, like 20 different buildings and all the time drivers from FedEx, all the time drivers from um, UPS and, and a number of other carriers will deliver it to the wrong building or they'll deliver it to the main building and not our building, right? And so this happens all the time in apartment complexes. So it's it's typically if that happens, um, you know, a mistake of the building or something like that, or a mistake going to the, the the main complex. And so that's why you want to say something along these lines. It helps and then kind of puts the onus back on them. It's like, hey, it's Mark delivered. Um, would you mind kind of investigating it a little bit? It's saying it's delivered because often the person just wants their package, right? They're willing to go check it out, especially if you say it kindly like this, okay? And finally, um, these last two right here, uh, this is if somebody asks to cancel the order. This happens to me like all the time at night. Like, um, you know, a customer will can will ask to cancel the order like two or three hours after they place it. And it's like, I've already placed the order. Now, if you haven't already placed the order and they ask to cancel it, then you're allowed to uh, accept the cancellation request and it won't go against your metrics, okay? But that's assuming that you haven't actually processed the order. If you have processed the order and a certain amount of time has elapsed, you're not going to be able to cancel the order on your supplier's website. So you're not going to obviously cancel it for them because you've already paid for the order and it's already on the way. Uh, it's already being processed by your supplier, right? So in that situation, because on Amazon, the customer has 30 minutes to cancel the order. And then obviously, you know, the, like they have the ability to cancel the order on their end within 30 minutes. If it goes past that 30 minute window, then they have to send a cancellation request to you. If you haven't processed their order yet, then you can accept the cancellation request. If you have processed the order, you want to say something like this. 
We can't, and this happens all the time to me. We can't cancel this order, unfortunately, as it was already processed and sent out for shipment. We usually input the tracking number as soon as the package starts uploading. Hope that helps and enjoy your, again, week slash weekend. Don't just copy paste this. Make sure you fix the week slash weekend. Pick whichever one makes sense there, okay? And finally, um, you know, if this right here is a situation where, um, let's say you mark, like, let's say you had a, uh, a supplier that had like a long shipping time. This used to, used to happen to me all the time on certain wholesale sites that were shipping from um, overseas. And I don't really use them anymore for that reason, but this might, you might run into this situation on a wholesale supplier. You might run into the situation on a retail supplier uh, with a long shipping time. Best Buy was a good example of this. When I used to ship from Best Buy every once in a while, because they have third-party sellers on their website, some sellers would take like two or three weeks to ship the item. It was crazy. Not all the time, but every once in a while. And so what I would do is I'd mark the order ship because you don't want to, you don't like, if you go too long over, like, let's say hypothetically you, you, um, you have five day handling time, right? Well, if you don't ship that order in five days, obviously it's going to be go against your late shipment rate, which is fine. But if you don't ship that item, I believe it's in like seven or 10 days. I forget what the limit is. Then Amazon cancels the order for you automatically. And they warn you before they do this. So if it's like, say, let's say like nine days, and obviously it still hasn't been marked shipped on your supplier's website, which you will run into this issue eventually, okay? Then you want to mark it shipped with a fake OAG tracking number. Do not mark that as a fake OAG tracking number in your spreadsheet, or you'll think that you didn't actually buy that product. Instead, what you want to do is you want to mark it shipped with an OAG tracking number, and then put a little note in your spreadsheet that says like, this is expected on, and this is a track, this is a OAG tracking number that doesn't correspond. And then what you can do is it'll buy you some time. It'll buy you like a week to 10 days, where typically within that week to 10 days, you will actually get the legitimate tracking number from your website. Because if you can remember, you waited five or you waited 10 days, and then you bought yourself another seven to 10 days. So by that time, you will have the actual legitimate tracking number, and you will have the actual legitimate date. So by the time the customer reaches out to you, you will have a concrete tracking number for them to use, and you will have a concrete, hopefully soon, delivery date to, to relay to them, right? So with that situation, you want to say, like, I just checked it, and it looks like I accidentally input the wrong tracking number, because if they're reaching out to you saying, like, their package wasn't delivered, and you figure out that that's what happened, then, and all this information should be in your spreadsheet, too. That's why you use spreadsheets. That's why you take notes on everything. That's why you input these notes into your spreadsheet, so you can identify these things and solve them. I just checked and it looks like I accidentally input the track the wrong tracking number. I'm really sorry, my mistake. I must have mixed it up with another order. I've been getting a lot of these lately. Yours was delivered to that address on the order, you know, and then you can so if if it was already delivered, then you can say something like this. Yours was delivered to the address on the order yesterday. I've listed the address below. I've also fixed your order and input the real tracking number. There you should go. Or you know, now you can see it tracked to your house. Now, if it hasn't been and it's expected, then you want to say like yours is expected to so same thing with the the first part right here. And then yours is expected to be delivered on X date, and then here's the tracking number, and then input the tracking number, obviously something along those lines, right? And then then literally repeat back to them their address so that they know. And those are some examples of, you know, customer service templates that are really going to save you time and, and a lot of headaches dealing with future issues. But again, these are templates that I use in my business. I probably have like five to 10 more, but I kind of just wanted to get you started here. You're going to be able to use these. You're going to be able to mold them to your specific situations for the situations that I just covered, but also you're going to want to create your own ones because you're going to have your own specific situations. But typically you're going to have, you know, about five to 10 things that reoccur over and over again. So develop templates, develop systems for handling them, and it's going to save you a lot of time and a lot of headaches.